hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well guys in this video we are going to see an interview experience for cognizant gen c role and in this interview experience both technical round and hr round questions are covered so make sure that you watch the video till complete end and very peacefully because you might also get the similar questions in your interview there is very high chances of that so make sure that you attend it very carefully and if required you can even watch the video twice so that you don't miss on any of the questions and how to answer them and i would also suggest you that when you are reading a question before directly solving uh, seeing the answer of that question try to think in your own mind or try to speak it aloud okay like how you will answer when you get that question okay and if you can't think of the answer then you can for sure uh, follow the answer that i am showing but at least try practicing on your own this will very this will improve your you know uh, speaking skills and how you will answer the uh, questions in the actual interview okay okay so before we start the video if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel as i regularly post these kinds of helpful videos for all of you you can see a lot of videos i'm posting on daily basis for your like gen c preparation also and there is a complete playlist dedicated for gen c preparation you can check here i've already uploaded a lot of interview experiences too make sure to check this playlist for better preparation so let's now start with first question let's look at this question that we have so first question as always is going to be tell me about yourself okay which means your intro you have to give in this one no but now before we look into the sample example of your intro i would suggest you few points that you should always include in your uh introduction so few points are about your project details okay so whatever project you have created include the details about that next is your educational details okay education details and if you haven't make a very good edu uh, like you know if you don't, haven't got a very good uh, education percentage or cgpa then you don't have to mention that but at least you can mention that you are you know from where you have done your schooling from where you have done your like you know uh, college and all okay the same thing you can mention that next thing is your uh, skill set okay so for example if you are proficient in one programming language or other so you have to mention that apart from that if there is any extra curricular or uh, certifications which you have done okay or anything which is particular to you okay uh, you only know it right which you have done in your college life or which is something to which has to, which you feel like can be told to the interviewer so you can include that data so make sure you prepare your interview uh, introduction in such a way let's see one of the sample examples that i have here i am a recent graduate with degree in and you can mention your degree like btech uh, and i have uh, in which branch you have done btech like in computer science during my studies i had developed a strong gauge uh, foundation in programming languages such as java javascript and sql i have worked on academic projects where i build web application and gain hands on experience in front end and back end development i am a quick learner eager to apply my knowledge in real world scenarios and excited to share my career or start my career with the company that provides excellent learning opportunities and growth okay so like yeah initially guys if you notice here i have taken i am a recent graduate but you can also mention i am uh, like i am a part of final year student or something okay so according to your case you can uh, customize it let's now move on to the next question can you write a program to print a pyramid pattern okay so like here is one of the programs that i have taken uh, which is in java and what is a pyramid pattern basically pyramid pattern is something like this okay you we must all aware right so using stars we have to print pyramids right so this is basically the code for it if you look at it so there are five rows so it can have like multiple rows okay based on that we can if uh, for example this is a pyramid of three rows if you want to make far five rows you have to include two more rows in this okay so what we will do is we will use uh, like one for loop initially which will run from i equals to one to i is less than or equals to rows which means five times then what we will do which we will take one more for loop which will run from j is equals to rows minus one and j is greater than zero and then we will print spaces using this one then there is one more for loop which is k is equals to one k is less than two into i minus one and k plus plus which is used for printing the stars okay and then you are finally system dot out dot print line okay so guys i'm not uh, diving deep into this code okay basically you all know how to print uh, this type of patterns if you are not aware uh, take some time understand this code and you will understand okay but this is an important question which was asked in interview so i thought it will be a good idea to cover it moving on to the next question what is view in sql okay so now we have a sql based question let's see the answer for this one a view in sql is a virtual table based on a select query 
It does not store data physically, but provides a way to simplify complex queries. Let's see one of the examples of view. Uh, create view employees view as select employee ID name department from employees where department is equals to IT. You can query it like a normal table. Okay, so select star from employee view. Uh, so like how we normally query a table. Okay, so basically you understood it. What view is view is a virtual table, which is based on select query only. And we have also seen you know, one example of views. So guys, you should also be I would say that, you know, if you are getting a question and uh, if you explain it with the query, then it also gives a good impact. Okay, but if you are not, you know, if you are not good with the query part and if you know the explanation, then you can directly explain it. If they ask, then only you can uh, give the query but if you can just if you if it is possible from your end try to give the example via query then you know it will be uh, it will go, give a good impact let's now move on to the next question that we have what is the use of group by in sql okay so the group by clause is used to group rows that have same values in a specified columns and allows performing aggregate functions like count sum average etc we have one example here for group by select department name count star as employee count from employees table group by department so this query counts the employees in each department okay so basically from uh, employees table we have taken the data and we are grouping by uh, using department hope you have understood it let's now move on to the next question that we have the next question is uh, one of the hr based questions which is what are your strengths and weaknesses let's see how can you answer this question Again, you have to customize this answer according to your own uh, personal strengths and weaknesses. Here is one such example we are taking. Okay, uh, for uh, for strengths, you can say problem solving skills is one of the strengths. I enjoy tackling technical challenges and finding efficient solutions. Adaptability, I quickly learn new technologies and adapt to different environments. Teamwork, I work well in a collaborative setting and communicate effectively with my team. Now, guys, usually you don't have to say like, you know, these many strengths or weaknesses. I have taken you so that you will get an idea of what different kinds of strengths you can say. One strength is more than enough. Okay, so either out of three, you are saying you have to say one only. Okay, not all three. I have taken multiple for your example. Okay, let's see weaknesses detail oriented nature sometimes i spend extra time ensuring everything is perfect however i am learning to balance quality with efficiency so guys always give weakness in such a way which also gives a good impact about you see here what kind of uh, like weakness we have taken that is the person is detail oriented now detail oriented is a good quality at one point if you see but on the other hand uh, if you are very detail oriented you might take extra time and you might not complete your times uh, complete your projects or complete your work within the deadline right so that is why it is considered as a weakness but on the other hand whatever the weakness you are telling is at one point of strength also right so you also have to take something like that okay which should not give a negative impression about you let's see the next one public speaking i used to feel nervous speaking in large groups but i have been improving by taking one or more uh, taking on more presentations and discussions. So see in this one also, even though the pub public speaking quality was not there, but how the person is explaining that I used to have this, but I have worked on it and try I'm trying to overcome it. So always, whenever you are saying your weaknesses, always say this, that I have this weakness, but I'm trying to overcome it. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Now, again, a HR based question, which is where do you see yourself in five years, next five years? Okay, let's see what can be the answer for this one. In next five years, I see myself growing both technically and professionally. I aim to take on more responsibilities, come contribute to impactful project and enhance my experience expertise in emerging technologies. I also aspire to mentor junior developers and be part of decision making processes that drive innovation in the company. Again, I have taken one example. You can say according to whatever your aspiration is from next uh, in next five years, don't give a very rigid answer like, you know, team lead or something uh, that won't look good because everyone thinks that, you know, yeah, this things everyone says. So try to explain a bit. Okay. Like what are your aspirations after five years of in this way, right? You can say like, I, I also aspire to train junior developers i'll want to contribute to impactful project which enhances my knowledge and all right so something like that you have to say let's move on to the next question now what are the key features of java okay let's see the answer for this question platform independent it runs on any operating system via java virtual machine object oriented it uses OOPS principle like encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism and abstraction. Now, you know, after this question, there is very high chances that the interviewer will ask you explain, in, uh, you know, object oriented concepts. Okay. So you have to explain encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism and abstraction. 
okay like next uh, feature is automatic memory management because java uses garbage collection next is your multi threading it supports concurrent execution next is security so java provides a secure environment by bytecode verification moving on to the next question now explain oops concepts in java okay so why if you have noticed why java uh, like why the questions of java is, is coming because the a candidate have told in his introduction that I have experience with Java and my preferred language is Java. Okay, so usually this happens that whatever the language that you will say uh, you are comfortable with, usually the questions will come on that. Okay, okay. So Java follows four main OOPs principle that is encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. What is encapsulation? Wrapping data and code into a single unit. Inheritance is one class acquiring properties of another. Polymorphism is same function method behaving differently on uh, different inputs abstraction is what hiding implementation details and exposing only the required functionalities now guys if you see this question like how it was asked you were asked to explain the concepts of oops in java right so which means you have to explain all four concepts in one answer right that is why only this much of uh, like you know thing you have to explain about each uh, concept or each principle of oops okay if you were asked separate question like explain ex encapsulation then you will not say only this much uh, you know answer for encapsulation so you also have to proactively decide how much you will speak on which question okay see uh, usually the interviewer interview answer should be 30 to 40 seconds long okay not too more than that okay you should not over explain also because you should take a pause and you should give the time to interviewer if they want to uh, if they want to ask you or if they want to you know let you uh, make you speak more then they will say okay go on keep on going otherwise you don't have to over speak also so make sure you like you know very attentively answers all the questions don't over speak for the question which you are asked okay okay let's now move on to the next question can java support multiple inheritance so the answer for this is java does not support multiple inheritance with classes to avoid ambiguity issues however it allows multiple inheritance using interfaces i've taken one example of multiple inheritance in java using interfaces you can see for your references if you have any doubts you can let me know in the comment section i'm not digging deep into this code uh, because this is just java based and not generic language so all the java folks will understand this right moving on okay explain final super and static keywords in java okay let's see what can be the answer for this one final it is used to declare constants prevent method overriding and prevent inheritance super it refers to the parent class and is used to access parent class methods or constructors static it belongs to the class not instances and can be used for methods variables or blocks and here is one of the examples for it okay so we have a class parent and then we have a function show and we are printing out final method then we have child class uh, which is extending parent and then it cannot override show because it's a final class okay hope you have understood it let's now move on to the next one what is exceptional handling okay uh, so exceptional handling is a mechanism to handle runtime errors in java using try catch finally throw and throws here is one such example which is explaining exception handling basically what is exception handling dividing by a uh, zero is also a exception handling okay so how you will catch it and how like finally what will be executed so this will always execute and whenever the error comes this will execute okay so you have to explain in such a way okay moving on what is the difference between final and finally in java okay so there are two different keywords like final and finally what is the difference between them let's see so final is used with variables constant methods prevents overriding and classes which means it prevents inheritance whereas finally a block that always executes used for cleanup actions in exception handling examples of finally is this code okay so i have like again taken one code so uh, you can have some material if just in case if you are asked okay try to explain with the code but the chances are very rare for these types of questions they won't ask you to like you know uh, explain via code but yeah just in case if they ask you can show moving on to the next question okay again we have hr based question let's see how do you handle pressure and tight deadlines uh, let's see what can be the answer for this question i handle pressure by prioritizing task breaking them into manageable parts and staying focused on the goal i maintain clear communication with my team to ensure that the work is well distributed and no critical aspect is overlooked if a deadline is tight i stay organized manage my time efficiently and ensure that the quality is not compromised while 
meeting the target okay so see in this way you can answer accordingly so basically that's why i always say that practice is very important otherwise you know at that time while answering you might stammer because you don't have sufficient points to speak on a particular topic right okay moving on to the next question now do you have any questions for me so usually this will be your last uh, question okay for the interview so and i would i would highly recommend you that you know never say no for this type of question okay don't say no you should always say yes and you should always ask at least one basic question okay so you can say yes i would like to ask a basic query or a question so like you know i have taken three different example questions you can ask any one but don't ask too much of questions okay one is more than enough one question is more than enough okay and be very mindful of what you are asking to the interviewer you should not put interview in such a situation that you know it becomes awkward scenario okay so you should always ask a very obvious and a very easy question which is very easy for interview or interviewer also to answer basically our aim is not to get our query resolved our aim is to make a good impression on the interviewer so that the interviewer gets a uh, thinking in their mind that you know yes the person is asking question which means he is actually interested in this job and he is like uh, proactive okay in nature so that is the main aim of asking question it's not like okay our question will be answered by the interviewer so our query will get resolved or something so this is just a scenario thing so okay let's see what are the sample questions that we have which you can ask in your interview what are the learning and training opportunities available for freshers at cognizant okay so uh, like you can ask this one question and then the next one that you can ask is how does the company support career growth and skill development can you share insights into the team or project i might be working on if i get this job okay so these kinds of basic questions which are pretty obvious for the interviewer also to answer you can ask them basically this shows your interest in learning and growing within the company so hope you have found it helpful okay uh, and you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section so that's all for today guys i hope you found the video helpful if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section make sure to join me on telegram and instagram as well you can ask your queries in the instagram dm as well and if you need any content you can request it on your on our telegram channel make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet to receive all the latest regular updates i regularly post off campus drives and preparation related videos for placements on my channel so that's all for today's video thanks for watching the video